Some Strava insights for the runners today. Last weekend, October 8th, saw the running of the 2017 Chicago Marathon. On the public leaderboards on Strava, about 10% of everybody who ran the event uploaded their data. So I've looked in to see what's popular on their wrist and a few other stats from the event as well. So numbers wise, I have 4,977 activities from the Chicago Marathon of around about 43,000 people who had entered. So just over 10%, a good sample size to see what's out there on the road. Okay, diving straight into it, straight to the point, what's on people's wrists? Well, given this is a very serious running event, there's no surprises there. The 4 on a 2 3 5 takes the cake, 17.6% in number one spot. Uh, coming in second place, the 4 on a 920 XT, getting a little old now, that unit, but still up there with 9.5. Phoenix 3, 4 on a 735 XT. Coming in at fifth place is the Strava iPhone app. That's quite low, but given this is a serious running event, not a lot of people are probably running with their phones. I'll have a dedicated GPS watch on. And then the Forerunner just completely takes everything else with some more Garmin's, more Garmin's. And the only other non-Garmin entry in the top 16 was the TomTom Tom Sports Watch coming in at a measly 1.9%. So the take home from that is Garmin, just Garmin. Um, the full details of these will be over on gplama.com. I'll link below. There are a total of 61 different devices used for this event. There's also unlisted. So there might be people running out there with some secret devices that Strava doesn't know about. But anyway, really interesting to see what's at the bottom of the field too. So we see things like um, Samsung Health, Polar M200, there's a Garmin Phoenix, and the old Forerunner 305 is there as well. Full data on gplama.com. Gender breakdown for the Chicago Marathon, 61% male, 33.8% female, and 5.2% unlisted. So around about a third female participation, which is good. Onto the running pace, the average pace for the sample set that I had was 5 minutes 40. There's the summary distribution there. Let's break that down to a more detailed pace distribution into 10 second bins. If you can see there, there's quite a few around that 5 minute to 5.10 to 5.20 mark. So participation wise for countries, United States obviously takes the cake. Unlisted 40%, there's quite a few people there not listing the countries they're from on their Strava profiles. Coming up in third place there, United Kingdom, and then we're on to Canada, Brazil, and there's 39 Aussies in my sample set. So extrapolating that out to a full 42,000, there would have been a lot of Aussies there. Good to see. Another metric that's been asked for in these videos is where's the winner's times and what's their pacing? Well, for the men, it's obviously way up here with Galen Rupp finishing at two hours, nine minutes, 20 seconds. Average pace of three minutes, 3.9, which equates to 19.58 kilometers per hour. So running that fast for over two hours, phenomenal. The women's winner, apologies for the pronunciation, I believe it is Turnesh Dibaba. Two hours, 18 minutes, 31 seconds to win the women's category, at the Chicago Marathon. Average pace of three, 16.9 minutes per kilometer. So there's some stats for the Chicago Marathon wrapped up. I'll link below to gplama.com where you can find the full stats of this and the full breakdown. Another one I'll add to this as well, from the Sunday Mail City Bay Fun Run in Adelaide. Now this is 12 kilometers long and something really, really interesting happened with the stats. I thought my numbers were wrong. I ran these a few times. Well, on the computer, I don't actually run yet. So I saw a lot of people, like a lot of people finish under that five minute pace. So 4.53, I think, was the average, or 4.55. But this drop-off there was phenomenal. What was that all about? Well, it was a 12-kilometer run, and a 5K pace means you finish under the hour. So it looks like for the Adelaide Sunday Mail City Bay Fun Run, well, pretty much city to surf for Adelaide, people really, really aim for that sub-one-hour time. Interesting stats from the data, anyway. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll be back with some more stats soon.